In this part 1 movie, you learn to create and wire simple custom attributes. The scene shows a stage with a few props. There's a door that has an opening measured in degrees, which ranges from 0 to 180. Similarly, there are two windows with openings measured in percentage, from 0 to 100. There's also a spotlight, and its target has been constrained to travel on a path. You'll start by creating custom attributes for the door and windows. One advantage of using custom attributes is that you'll be able to control the doors and windows from one centralized spot. This prevents you from having to select objects individually to alter their states. To store the custom attributes element, you need to select the master object. This can be any object in the scene, or it can be a dummy object you create. In this case, select the back wall. It will act as your master object. Anytime you'd need to open the door or windows, all you'd need is to select the wall. In the Modify panel, choose the Attribute Holder modifier. This is an empty modifier whose sole purpose is to store custom attributes. To create a custom attribute, go to Animation Parameter Editor. Here, you can define the parameter type. Float is the default. That's any numerical value that can include decimals and will work fine for the door opening. The UI type in this case can be set to Spinner or Slider. A preview can be seen at the bottom of the dialog. Select the slider for this example. Rename the custom attribute Door Opening and press Enter. The preview is updated. The default value is 0, which ultimately translates into a closed door. You can set the range of opening, set it from 0 to 170. A door typically never opens a full 180 degrees, not if there's a handle that bumps against the wall. The current modifier is the default target for the custom attribute to appear in, although other options are available. Click the Add button to add the custom attribute to the wall's current modifier, the attribute holder. You now have a new slider UI that you can manipulate even though it is not connected to anything yet. With the wall still selected, right-click and choose Wire Parameters, Modified Object, Attribute Holder, Custom Attributes, Door Opening. This represents the value of the slider you just created. Click the door and then choose Object Pivot Door, Open Degrees. The Parameter Wiring dialog appears. Here, you can choose which object controls which. In this case, the slider object is in the left pane and the door is in the right. You can set the slider to control the door, left to right, the door to control the slider, right to left, or make a two-way connection. Set a two-way connection for this example and then click Connect. Play with the slider to see the effect in the viewport. Close the parameter wiring dialog when done. Create another slider for the window. Since you're dealing with an opening percentage, set the range from 0 to 90, just shy of fully open. Add the custom attribute to the modifier and wire it to one of the windows. If you have time, create a third slider for the second window. Next, you create custom attributes to control various aspects of the spotlight. In the parameter type list, choose Color. Set the default color to white and rename the attribute Light Color. Add it to the Attribute Holder modifier. Using Wiring, wire the new attribute to the Spotlight color.
choose a two-way connection and click Connect. Try changing the color and see the effect in the viewport. Next, create a float spinner, name it Light Strength. You'll use it to control the intensity, multiplier value of the light. Set the range from 0 to 5 with the 1 default. 1 is the default value for the multiplier value of a light. Add the custom attribute to the list and wire it to the multiplier value of the spotlight. Test your results. Finally, you'll create a custom attribute to control the position of the spotlight target on a path. The spot target is already constrained to a path and its travel ranges from 0 to 100. Create another slider and name it Light Target. Set the range to go from 0 to 100, which should match the path travel of an object constrained to a path. Set the default value to 50, so that the target is initially pointing to the middle of the stage, middle of the path. Make sure the back wall is selected, and add the slider to the modifier list. And then wire it to the spot target. To prevent any mistake, select the light target by pressing H. It is easier to select it from a list. Wire the slider value to the position, path constraint, percent value of the transform controller. Choose a left to right direction. This ensures that you can only control the spot target using the slider. Click connect and test the slider to view the problem. The movement is very jerky. This is because, although the path travel is viewed as a percentage, 0 to 100, internally it is calculated between 0 and 1. You can fix the problem in a couple of ways. You can divide the expression value by 100 and update the connection. Or you can edit the values of your custom attribute. Remove the divided by 100 expression and update the connection again. This will bring back the jerky motion. To change the values of the custom attribute, click the Edit Delete button. In the dialog that appears, select the attribute you want to modify, in this case, Light Target. Change the range values to go from 0 to 1 and set the default value to 0 0.5 accordingly. Click Apply Changes. Close the dialog and test the results. If you wish, enable Auto Key and have fun animating the various custom attributes. The fact that you can control various objects from a single location gives you a distinct advantage. In this movie, you created custom attributes and wired them mostly to simple parameters. In the next movie, you'll learn how you can control transforms and specifically forward kinematics rotations. That's one area where custom attributes can be very handy.